very popular player and one that you could probably go to eBay right now and find one is the Playtape 1200. And the Playtape 1200 is very simply made. It has a volume control here. And like the 4-track tape, which I talk about in another one of my videos, uh, it only has two programs and they do not automatically switch. That was what was cool about the 8-track is the fact that once it reached a program or a track, it would automatically switch to the next track, which was very, very innovative. Uh, these do not do that. So if you leave this on channel one, it will play the same songs over and over and over until you switch it to channel two. And again, it will play the same songs over and over. Now, there is a stereo switch on here, as you can see here. And from what I read online, there never was a stereo tape that was uh, introduced. Um, but the switch is, is still there. So if you put it on stereo now, you'll hear channel 1 and 2 played simultaneously. And uh, this machine does not play stereo. It only has a mono amplifier on the inside. If we look down the, uh, the shaft here where the, the tape is inserted, which I don't think you can see very well. Hey, there we go. Now we're seeing something. Inside this machine, there's actually two heads. There's a, t there's a head for track 1 and there's a head for track 2. I have another 1200 machine here that I've taken apart and I'm going to show you the insides of it and kind of show you how to uh, get one of these going should you decide to collect one. They're fairly easy to, uh, to repair and uh, refurbish. But uh, this one has two, tra two, uh, two uh, playback heads. I wanted to say record heads, but they don't record. Um, operates on four C batteries in this compartment here and there is a uh, a speaker jack, not a headphone jack, but a speaker jack. If you plug headphones in here, you're going to get blasted. Um, I think you probably could put headphones in there, but uh, you'd want to turn the volume down to a minimum. So again, this is the Playtape 1200, and there was many, many different models that were introduced and uh, are very collectible. There was even a children's version of the Playtape machine. So I have one for you here that I have taken apart move my camera around here and uh, get it set up so I can use both hands. On occasion, you may put in a play tape and have something like this happen. And I just wanted to show you that it's very simple to repair one of these tapes before we get into the machine itself. There's one screw that's, uh, that holds the cartridge together. So if you take this screw out and pull the, uh, the tape apart, uh, or the cartridge apart, you'll be able to access the, uh, the tape hub on the inside and or the, or the reel and, uh, and do your repairs or uh, in this case fix tape that's trailing out of the, uh, the cartridge there. Always a big problem with these uh, types of tapes. Even 8-tracks had a tendency to be eaten or yanked out by the machine. Also the pads that are on these uh, will be pretty much rotten by the time you get them unless somebody else has already repaired them. Uh, I've tried a couple of different methods of replacing these pads and these pads here are actually little uh, furniture feet that I, I picked up at Lowe's and cut into strips and stuck in there. But unfortunately they're a little bit too stiff. They don't really give that well. So, so far the best method that I have seen to replace the pads on these tapes is to use a foam paintbrush and cut the foam paintbrush to uh, again into into little strips and glue it with uh, super glue uh, like a thick super glue and just a couple of uh, dots will do you and uh, stick those back there behind the tape as you can see here and make sure that my focus is working here so you can see that okay. So if you get the tapes, you'll probably have to refurbish the tapes as well as the machine that plays them. Now, this particular one here, this 1200, actually worked as soon as I got it. But I took it apart, and it's very easy to take apart. There's one screw on the back of the unit. It's right in the middle. And once you take that screw out, you can pretty much pry the thing apart, and it comes apart. The belt in the one that I had was working. It was a... It was a you know, a fairly decent belt, but it still had a little bit of uh, slack in it. And as you can see here, if I turn the belt or pull on the belt, it should pull the motor and the uh, the wheel here uh, 
together and the other one would slip a little bit. Also, the, the, uh, the speaker in this one was completely shot. And I don't know if you can see that in there, but I took a, a speaker out of something. I don't know, it was probably a clock radio or something. And I, uh, I, I put the speaker in there. The other one just vibrated. I mean, it was just noise. So uh, I did replace that speaker in there as well. To replace this belt, you've got a couple of screws that you're going to have to remove. And there's one here on this side of the, uh, the, the flywheel here. There's one on that side, and there's one on that side as well. And then this bracket comes off, and then you can replace your belt. And you say, well, where do I get a belt that's going to be that exact size? What I do is I go on eBay and I look for belt kits for VCRs and you can buy numerous different kinds of belt kits and um, I don't know which kit this one came out of because I just kind of throw them in a little box and, and I have them there. But uh, I recommend just finding you some belt kits that were made for VCRs and, uh, and hopefully in the kits that you buy you'll have some that, uh, that fit. So. Uh, that's essentially what you're going to need to do to, to get one of these going. You might have to replace the speaker. Uh, you might have to replace the belt. Um, I did kind of lubricate this guy here a little bit on the underside. And again, I put the, the foam on the back of the tape. And I'll kind of play it a little bit for you, and you can hear what it sounds like. I'm going to see it working here. Better tell them, but wiser now, I can sing this song to you. So there you go, a little bit of uh, Trini Lopez for you there. And um, so play tape is a, is a much more fun and uh, less rare format to collect. There seems to be a lot of them on, the, on eBay, although the ones in the, that are still in their bubble packaging that they originally came in really go for a premium. Uh, your best bet is to buy one that has tapes with it and you'll get a better, uh, a better deal on, uh, on a play tape machine. But again, the players for these four-track tapes, even though the, the, they're a little bit higher quality, hi-fi quality, than, uh, than the play tapes, uh, these are definitely more portable and a little bit more fun to, uh, to collect. So anyway, I hope uh, this was helpful to you, and I, uh, I recommend you get you a play tape machine, and you'll take yourself back in time to the 1960s when all kinds of crazy tape formats were being introduced. And... Um, Hope you enjoyed watching.